I'm a smart man. <laughs> All evidence to the contrary. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions, the idiots. I'm Corbin. Huh? And today... Comedy gold, my friend. Oh my god. We are on to episode eight. There's two episodes left. Uh, bum, 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 bum. It's been a fantastic series so far. So, so good. Um, I'm guessing stuff is about to hit the fan. Uh, stuff is about to go down, my friend. Uh, lots of death, I'm guessing, in the last two episodes, I would imagine. And I'm making a call on something. What? The gun that Tripathy's wife had in the drawer is going to appear somehow in the next two episodes. Yeah. I wonder who... They showed us that for a reason. I wonder who she's going to kill. Or they just know that their gun's there. Anyways, uh... Just once again, if uh, you are new here, uh, this is going to be cut up. Uh, just the highlights. I might, because I did the first cut up of the first episode, and I put like a second of the clip with no audio, just so they could see what we're talking about. And then I took it away. <laughs> so like, if somebody gets stabbed, you see a, a second clip with no audio, and then so they can see what we're talking about. I don't know. Yeah. I'm assuming. I hopefully that won't get. <laughs> Regardless, um, it's until we get permission from Amazon. Hopefully, season two maybe we'll be able to put out like we used to. But if you'd like to see the full uncut version, head over to Patreon. Our patrons are very excited that we're finally to the end of it because I did the first edited version of it, uh, mm -hmm. and they thought it was the last two episodes, and they got <laughs> I put it up there. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. They, they got real upset. So, here we go. All right, the last episode is called Tandav. Is that how you pronounce that? Tandav. Oh, uh, yeah. Tandav. All right. Well, here we go. I think they're there to talk about the hit on the boys that did not go well. I think Tripathi called that hit. With the police? I do. I don't think so. <laughs> That's great. How are none of these other guys shooting? <laughs> they say that more here than sacred games. Great opening. <laughs> Great opening. Did not see that coming, man. I did. I even said it on on the video. But I am I I'm a little confused as to why his men didn't start shooting them though. Because they clapped their pants. <laughs> This guy's going crazy, man. <laughs> He's totally losing it. I honestly have no idea how this is going to go. He could talk to them and be proud of them. He could kill them both right now. Wow. Great scene. <sighs> This guy has done a great job this whole series. Phenomenal job. What if Sweetie dies and his brother dies? He's just going to go full-fledged crazy person. If she says yes, she's a dead woman. 
Yeah, she's gonna she's gonna be that piece to she's throw good. him over the edge. Especially if somehow his brother is responsible for it. I know that voice. We've heard a Coke studio with this guy. Is it a Tifa slum? It very well could be. I'd be impressed if you got that. Let me know if I'm right. I think it's a Tifa slum. It's far too happy right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's her game? Is no she, idea. Is she just really, really like a horny person and just wants to have sex with everything? Uh, I don't think it's because, I mean, but she's, I think she's unsatisfied with her sex life with. Yeah. But I just don't know what her game is because she obviously, she just talked about killing her husband and. <laughs> what? <laughs> you knew you were getting married the day before when you planned the wedding, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying there's other stuff you can do. <laughs> he's, he's more focused on his own body and bodybuilding than on her the night of his wedding. I am absolutely dumbfounded. Well, he's not the brightest tool in the shed, as we know. Where is he? Damn it. Uh, the lighting crew just has been... <sighs> oh, Rick. I found out that that guy, because you were asking him to be in an epic, he's in Jota Akbar. Another reason to see that. What's he going to do? Why do I feel like he's going to die? From who? It just said 12 missed calls. Oh, him, because he, he, he needed the drugs. So they think he he was working with him. Oh god, that's not good. It's one way to handle a loss. Not too gracious in <laughs> loss there. Um yeah, so now Tripathi thinks that he was plotting with Compounder to kill him. Right, right. Because he called him a bunch of times. Well, Muna wants him to think that. Yeah. I, again, I think Tripathi is a step ahead of everybody. I think he knows what his wife's doing. I think he knows what Muna's up to. Hmm. And he's letting pieces play out like a chessboard. He, he didn't know uh, our, our friends were going to kill that guy, though, at the beginning. So does he want him to go kill him? Yeah. Basically said... Basically said, take them out, the reins are yours. Oh, my stars, really? That went by fast. Wow, that went by fast. Oh, man. Good night. And yes, the shit is hitting the fanith. Uh, all the crazies, all the crazies are in charge. Who shouldn't be in charge now? <laughs> like uh, Tripathi put his son in charge now, and the big the big guys going all crazy. Uh, what? Hold on, guys. There was an alarm that happened. That was alarming. <laughs> Is it an Amber Alert? Are you getting one? No. Oh, okay. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the two people who probably shouldn't be in charge right now are in charge. And so there's going to be an epic duel. Uh, and still people have yet to die outside of that, that other guy at the beginning. And so I think next episode yeah. we're going to see at least two main characters go. 
I'm predicting uh, Sony. Uh, Muna, probably. I don't think our buff guy is going to die. I think they're going to keep him. Did and you mean Sweetie? Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, buff, buff guy's wife. Um, I don't think they're going to kill off our buff guy yet. I think they're saving. And I don't think Tripathy really wanted to hand over the, the reins. I think he, like you were saying, I think he knows. And so he's, I think he knows the big guy could probably kill his son. I, I do know this. I'm really impressed with the writing and they're not doing anything predictable by any stretch of the imagination. Um, everything is still believable as it was from the first episode. They have a, they, they hit the ground running like we felt with that first episode. The score is everything the score has been doing has been great from little intimate details to, and of course we've talked about the lighting and, uh, and now we are, the table is set for what should prove to be a pretty incredible season ending episode. Yeah. Um, I'm what I'm, I'm going through the, um, the, the credits here to see if I was right with, uh, um, the, who was singing. Cause I thought, Oh, I thought for sure. Oh, I know I've heard that voice before. I just, I think it's a Tifa slum. Um, hold on. I think we're almost there. But yeah, the one episode left. Obviously, there's so much more to be done, obviously, which is why yeah. they're, obviously they're coming yeah. back for season two. Um, right. But yeah, for being a quite simple gangster family story, like we were talking about, it's still a simple story. It's a gangster family, mm-hmm. and they're trying to run a business, and, you know, things go amok. Uh, as they do. Right, right. Um, right. As opposed to the other shows that are a little more complicated. They have a little more, like, mythology or whatever attached to them. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. a fairly simple, but it's also not predictable. Yes. Like, even though, like, I thought at the beginning, uh, I think I said, I was like, do you think he's going to kill him? Because I, I felt that tension. But then I was like, I don't know why... And I still don't really know because, like, let's say if somebody killed Tripathy, there's no way his buddy, um, McBool, wouldn't be going out dying with Tripathy. Right. So maybe he doesn't have his loyal of people. I don't know. I just... Um, but, yeah, so the, I like the unpredictability. Uh, obviously, I love the violence uh, mm-hmm. of it all. Um, I'm, I'm predicting our buddy... Um, what is the buff guy's name? What is the character's name? I know we 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 constantly call him Buff Guy. Yeah, <clears throat> I always because it's a it's a different language uh, and, and like different country names, and so they're harder for me to remember sometimes. I can't remember English names though, so it's not <laughs> like I'm terrible with names. I've gone. Yeah, I've been in class before for like six months with people, and I talk to them every single day, and I would not know their name. Because yeah, after uh, after a while after a while you can't ask their name because you know you've been talking right to them for... and they know you. <laughs> it's happened no, many times in my life. Yeah, but faces. Yeah, faces yeah. I, I can know, but yeah. So I'm I'm predicting he goes American Psycho crazy because obviously we're predicting his wife dies. That's it. If if she doesn't, you know, I think somebody in his life is going to die. Um, whether it's his brother, whether it's his wife, whatever, I think somebody's going to affect him, and that's going to make him go complete nutso. And I think that actor has done a phenomenal job. Um, he's not an actor yes, he like he's not the type of actor I normally drawn to, in terms mm-hmm. of like a big buff guy that doesn't have a beard. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> that's it's, the big one. That's the biggest one. Uh, but I love his character. I think the actor who's playing him has done a fantastic job. Obviously, credit to the writing as well for everybody in the show and the casting. Abishak for your casting, man. Phenomenal job. So, yeah, predictions for next episode? I predict it's going to be unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I know what I think they could do that would be compelling dramatically. But I genuinely love the fact that every scene 
I don't know if someone's going to say good job and get a pat on the back or in the middle of a sentence, see a bullet go through their head. And I, I love that unpredictability. It's, it's, that's the tension that's there in the great gangster films of all time. This tension of, uh, it, it, like in Goodfellas, you never know if Pesci's character oh, is yeah. actually laughing. It's fun. That whole moment when he says, you think I'm funny? That's why you're laughing at me? Is there something funny about me? No, no, you know, you just, you just, oh, what? I just, what? I just, what? I, I don't know why you're getting bent out of shape. Ah, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> Joe, Joe Pesci, one of the greatest, like, you, like, if you just saw him on the street, you didn't know it was Joe Pesci. You'd be like, that's not a very intimidating guy. But yeah, the, so the, the, his personality, yeah. his personality that he gives off and his attitude and his confidence, he's one of the most intimidating people you can see on screen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like Nawaz. It's a very similar kind of casting where Scorsese's even said, you know, you, to look at Joe Pesci, you would never think you want to put him in the the big hitman role that he would be in. But he's he's intimidating for you don't think about his stature because he's a small man. He's very small, not as small yeah. as uh, Danny DeVito, but he's he's pretty short. No, but he's pretty short. If I, I think Pesci's probably five foot five, if that five, yeah. four. Yeah. Anyways, I'm excited. One episode left of this season. So, on to the next episode! <laughs>